longer. Britney Spears. Oh, goodness gracious. I love that song. I'm sorry. I will belt it out. I will sing like a girl. I'll try anyway. It's good to keep my vo uh, vocal cords warmed up anyway, by the way. But that being said, oh, yeah, it's embarrassing. Anywho, I hope to God my neighbors can't hear me. That's the only thing. I face the street, but outside of that, it's my house to the other sides of me. But uh, hmm, I wonder sometimes. Anyway, yes, Britney Spears, good stuff. Dan Radio Style, thank you, everyone, for joining me, as always. Uh, how to love myself more or <laughs> something along those lines. Um, I had someone bring up the question, and it's actually just an amazing idea to, to cover this because we've you know been covering all these different aspects and angles of, of manifesting and how we can make it quicker and faster and better and how we can actually look inward when we're having doubts, right, and try to improve ourselves. So all these wonderful things we've been talking about, but sometimes we gloss over how we can possibly make ourselves feel better. Some of the techniques that we can use that will, you know, do that, right? Get your vibrations up, but just in general, make your life better. Because again, when your life is getting better from all the angles that you have, you start to just feel better naturally without having to try. So for some of us, you know, we're like, I try and I can't. Well, uh, here's some ways you might be able to get around it. So one great thing you can do is kind of create a, a little ritual, maybe daily, hopefully, where you it's just self, self like caring, self love, self uh, like, you know, maybe working on your nails, maybe putting on lotion, maybe watching some show that you're fond of, maybe, you know, you know, throw it on Netflix or some YouTube thing. Maybe it's your chance to sit down and watch my video or whatever, right? Maybe it's a cup of coffee. Maybe it's just that moment where you, you just, it's love time. It's time for you. It's just time for you to do something that's positive and happy. And it's sort of a, a, a habitual pattern like kind of thing, right? That you can generally, you know, pamper yourself, just a moment for you, just a little bit of time every day, put in, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day for just you. A little alone time, if you will. Another really, really good thing to do is as you meet people that are of like mind, and believe me, you will, as you start to vibrate at this new level, as you start to get into law of attraction, as you start to get into, you know, crystals and uh, chakras and I mean, whatever, whatever the thing is that you're really starting to get into, you will bump into people that are into those cool kinds of things. Likes attract likes. These energies that you're now like vibrating at, you know, because all of a sudden you started reading about crystals and the power of crystals and you're like, wow, that's really cool. I didn't know they could do that. And then you tried to meditate with them and you're like, oh, wow, it seems different. So again, it's one of those things where you start bumping into people that have similar interests, same is the true with law of attraction, right? So as you meet these people, start forming little communities, get comfortable, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, whatever, you know, just maybe uh, I've seen people comment on each other's comments, which I think is super cool, by the way. But you know, maybe you guys could figure out ways to share information um, somehow, you know, uh, I, I, you know, whatever, we'll you can figure it out other places. But again, you, when you get these communities, it really does help you kind of find uh, a place where you do have comfort where you can talk about things and know that someone's not going to be all negative on you. Uh, one thing that also is great is a lot of us have all, we try all sorts of things, right? There's all these different techniques to try to make ourselves happy, try to work on ourselves, try to meditate, self-love meditations, affirmations, all these different things, right? What makes the most sense is to kind of try things, see how they make you feel. We've talked about this before. See if you notice any results. That's always fun, right? Sometimes something cool kind of happens coincidentally. And uh, you're like, hey, hey, I was just thinking about that yesterday. Okay, so like those kinds of things. Jot these down. These ones worked. These are things that worked for me. I have like, you get like a list of things that you can go to if you need to. If you're having a hard time, if you're having one of those extra doughty moments, which will happen from time to time. You've got some extra firepower. You're like, ah, one and two usually covers it, but damn it, I had to go to number three. Oh my goodness, right? So sometimes it helps to know what does work for you and then kind of go back to those sorts of things when you need to, especially. One thing that's really important is treating our bodies well and healthily and positively. Like treating our bodies, our actual physical bodies. We're not just what we eat, or some people would say a slightly more crass version of that same concept, but we're not just what we eat, but we're also the information we take in, right? We're also, if we're listening to smut or we're spending all this time on Facebook, just reading all sorts of stupid ads and stupid crap or just whatever, right? Like 
there's probably other places where you could be spending time. You could be maybe doing research on maybe different affirmations, different meditations, different law of attraction studying, different Goddard techniques, different Goddard things, right? Like you can get in and study more and more, watch more videos from other people like Anyas and I or whoever, you know, uh, you know, a lot of successful people doing videos like that. Again, find some sort of way to give good energy to your mind as well as your body. So of course, feed yourself well, try to eat healthier products. We've got a lot of heavily overly processed foods. Try to eat less of those if you can. You will actually notice you feel better when you eat better. That was actually one of the first funnest things that I found when I started playing around with my diet a lot was certain foods make just make me feel bloated, gross, yeah, you know, like just not good. And some of them maybe be yummy. Like one for me is bread. It's not flour. Like I can eat grains and pasta and all sorts of other stuff. It's not the wheat flour or anything crazy. It's just something about bread and the way it is when it gets into my body. My body does not like bread. I love it. It's delicious. I love bread. But if I eat it, there is a price that I pay for it, essentially. So again, it's one of those know your body. Pay attention to how you are and treat your body with love. You know, exercise too. It's another really, really, really good one. Okay, this one's going to seem kind of weird, but you will be surprised how this plays out. So if you want to try something totally strange and have a little bit of fun, and I, I can, I, I'm looking forward to comments tomorrow, by the way, for this one specifically. Your closet. What? Huh? Clean out your closet. Not just your closet per se, but the closet's a good one. But maybe if you've got like a junk space, maybe there's a place under the stairs. But certainly, depending on where you're at in your whole scheme of, of, of property ownership, slash rental slash living at mom and dad's, you know, start with the closet because the closet's where we stick all the stuff that we don't want to deal with. And there's a lot of symbolism, honestly, truly. And this is a, like a lot of spiritual circles. This is a very, very cool thing. And it's, it's funny if you pay attention to it, but areas within our home, like our homes represent ourselves. They represent us. Maybe if you've got a family living in your home, then it's your family. It represents, but it represents you. So the different aspects of the home symbolically represent different aspects of ourselves. So in the case of if it's just your room and you have a closet, it's perfect. But if it's in a larger sense, closets are even deeper recesses typically, right? But the closet represents kind of hidden past things, hidden things that you're maybe not happy about. Some of the things that are causing some of these doubts. The closet represents old memories that you need to let go of, which is actually another thing that I'm going to mention. But the closet represents kind of the stuff we put away and hide, right? It's kind of like the back corner of the freezer, right? Same thing, right? You just like, be like, holy crap, how long's this been? I don't even remember ever even seeing this in the store, right? Like, it's been in there years. So again, closets carry all sorts of crazy stuff. Go into your closet, clean it out. Clothes especially, too. It's like talking about making room for living in the end and all that stuff, right? Uh, how many outfits do you have that seriously you will never wear and God forbid your significant person ever saw you in one of those, right? Seriously, right? I mean, I know I know some of the ladies out there. We got some clothes in our closet that we're hanging on to in case what in case we get fat again, <laughs> right? I mean, come on. I know. I hope I'm not stepping on any toes. But seriously, I know all of us have clothes. I got clothes that don't fit me well, but I hang on to them mainly because I spent money on them. I'm kind of retarded in that regard. But anyway, at least I'm not a hoarder. So again, cleaning out your closet, it's amazing what you will notice when you do it and some of the stuff you'll find. Seriously, try it out. It's awesome. Oh, gosh. Huh. Okay, so how many of us actually constantly find ourselves looking at, and especially Facebook, We're gonna, I'm going to use this as an example because it's such a great example of such a horrible practice that is annoying. You ever notice how when people post on Facebook, right, everything that's going on in their life is amazing. It is the perfect snapshot, right? They don't show the fact that they took 42 pictures to get that one photo where everyone was smiling, right? Because the other one, you had someone that was punching someone. You had someone that was, ah, you had someone that had candy cane hanging out of their face. You had another one that was had a pick on their nose, right? One that was staring off at God knows what, right? So again, Facebook presents this perfect scenario, this Here's the here's how we were we were oh, we were loving like light glow from behind their heads right it's like it's like almost angelic right it's just some like the sun finally because it took seventy two photos and then finally the sun just oh my god the sun's right behind us how perfect oh take that one right but again it's presented perfectly but we don't see all the stuff underneath so so many of us are comparing ourselves to others to other people based off of Something lame like Facebook for sure. Like they'll see a photo and everyone's happy. Of course, 
Who the hell posts photos of everyone being like, you're right, that doesn't happen. So it's always that best foot forward. It's kind of like first dates. First dates suck because it's like that best foot forward, right? Like everyone's trying to be really like perfect. No one wants to accidentally make a bodily noise or, <laughs> you know, like it's, oh, I hope that doesn't happen. My stomach's a mess, right? It's, <laughs> it totally happens. I love it. I just think it's funny because I've been, I've, uh, my first, uh, my ex, this is a quick aside. My ex, literally the first date, first date, I go to her house. And I spent five plus years with this woman. Love her dearly, by the way. God, I'd fear me if I ever saw her. But um, God wouldn't. But anyway, anyway, first thing I do, step out of the truck, take a step onto the grass, dog poop. Step number one. <laughs> so, you know, fun things happen. It's like, hi. Yeah, no, I got to scrape my shoes. I got dog poop all over them. It was good times. Hey, for those of you out there that are spiritual, this is a good time. Explore your spirituality. is another thing to kind of sink some of your time into. And I, you will be amazed at how that will start to feel and benefit you as well. So another great practice. If, you know, if you're religious, then spend some time down there. You will actually be surprised no matter what direction you go. When, when you incorporate law of attraction into it and you kind of like allow it to sort of, you know, fold into the mix, if you will, um, no matter what your belief, even spiritual, all this stuff, right? When you take that and you take Goddard and all those teachings, it's actually amazing because there is a place for them. And it does actually, in my mind, fill in some of the gaps. I was brought up religious, I mean, initially, and it kind of expanded. So again, it's a good time to explore and expand and, and maybe spend some time some places that you haven't. Uh, get kind of back in touch with whatever your inner spirit is. And it uh, does help uh, a lot. Another great thing, if you're trying to figure out ways self-love, try to get yourself in a better place. It's really good to do something you're good at. I don't know what you're good at. I mean, it can be hobbies, I think, too. I think that kind of fits into that. But really, something you're good at, what, they, what the actual thought process is behind this is, say I'm really good at tennis, and I go out and play some tennis. And it's not necessarily winning or losing. Maybe it is, you know, whatever. But it's just like going out and doing well. And just be like, man, no, I played really good, got some exercise, right? And it kind of goes back to that one we were talking about earlier. But it's something you're good at. And you're like, yeah, no, that was awesome. Or maybe drawing. Maybe you get back into drawing and you start drawing some beautiful pictures and you're like, yeah, that's really, like you're good at it. And when you do something you're good at, you realize, yeah, I am like, I'm all right. I'm an okay person. I'm not whoever I've been beaten up on for the past couple of weeks. It's all grumpy, bumpy right now. And this is why we're doing self-love techniques, right? Another thing, and this is really important, at least in my world, hugely important in my world. And if I didn't live alone, um, this I would have, believe me, always, there's always a place, a period in my life, a, t a, a period in the day. There's a happy place for me, always. It's not necessarily anywhere specific per mu as much as away from everybody. It's like me alone, as alone as I can. I literally, and I seriously could, I could sit in a more or less quiet room or a closet just five minutes just to feel like, ah, all right, just to have a moment for me you know, hopefully I could talk to myself. That's really one of the things I like to do is I like to talk to myself. So some people frown on that when they, um, when they, uh, when they're with you, right. And you just start talking to yourself and they're like, are you talking to me? And you're like, no, I just, I was talking to me actually. Why are you eavesdropping? That's rude. <laughs> anyway. So again, happy place, some sort of place where you can go and be happy. Maybe it's out in your balcony in the morning. Like I was talking about having a cup of coffee that could also fall into this, which is where I said that, you know, kind of fell into that. Maybe walks in the park, walks in nature in general. Maybe you go exploring. Maybe you just look for nature. Maybe there's a, like a, a horses or whatever that are down the way. Maybe you start buying carrots, right? And you walk down the way and you take a carrot with you and you make friends with a horse, right? Maybe you make friends with a cow, go down there with a, I don't know what cows like. They, they eat grass, right? I usually just pull grass. Like, there you go and hand it to them. They seem very happy that you're taking all that effort out of their day by just handing them the grass. But anyway, whatever, get in touch with nature, do something, whatever it is, have a happy place. And all these things will make a huge difference. And last, but certainly not least by any imagine, and I'm sure some of you are like, oh my Lord, I thought he would never end. Yes, I know. I know it feels like that sometimes, but I wanted to at least give you 10, right? You're letting go muscle is what they call it. And I think it's pretty funny. That's a good way to look at it. But a lot of us have a hard time letting go of things in the past. I just had a comment recently that was related to the same thing. And frankly, we all have to forgive ourselves, period, 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 period. If something is in the past that you're upset about that someone did to you, or if there's something in the past, and I guarantee every one of us fall into this, if something in the past that someone did to you, or if something's in the past that you did to someone, they fall in the same category, 
you need to forgive yourself. Yourself, not them. Who cares about them? They don't matter. Forgive you. You're the one that has a problem with it. You're the one that needs to forgive yourself. It's if if it's because you feel they've wronged you, then then you forgive yourself for allowing it because again, you own you. You control you. Unless you're in some sort of weird cultural scenario that I don't understand and I apologize if if in that case because I don't know, there's some strange you know, what they call them, patriarchal societies. I, you know, again, I live, I live in the, anyway, anyway, I, I don't understand that. <laughs> but that all being said, you know, you, we have control over these situations. We have control over who is allowed to hurt us and who isn't, who we are vulnerable to and who we aren't, who we hand our trust to and who we don't. We control that. So if there's been times in the past where we failed, ourselves, where I let myself down because I let somebody, nah, not that I let someone in because I honestly, I've changed from all of it. So it's really hard for me to look at past errors and think of it as a bad thing. So I really try, it's even better to truly see it for the blessing that it is. And how many times have you actually learned something from these experiences? But whatever the case is, it's something that we need to let go of, let, let go of it. It's a burden. If there's any issues in the past that are still hanging on to you. They need to be let go of. If that's something that's extremely difficult to do, I'd probably recommend maybe, you know, seek professional counsel maybe, right? Maybe find a counselor that you could talk to. Uh, Law of attraction is good, but I don't necessarily want to get into trying to fix someone psychologically, right? I mean, you know, I'm intrigued. You can come back and tell me what they told you. But, you know, that all being said, we, we need to figure out ways to let go of these angers in the past, these hurts, because holding on to them does nothing. Even if they say, I'm sorry, that still doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. Think about it for a second. Literally, someone goes, I'm sorry. Does that, I mean, well, I'm sorry. Even if they say it in a good way, I'm sorry. You know, like, right? Doesn't change it. Doesn't make a difference. It's, it doesn't stop what happened. It doesn't change the trust. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You, forgiving you, is the only way you can get on with it. So let go of this nonsense. Nonsense, poopy pants, as I think Ace Ventura said in one of his movies. Again, let go. It's okay. It's okay to let go of these things. There's no reason or benefit to hold on to them. And they're certainly anchors to your energy. They're just holding you down. They're lead weights. So by identifying these things, and a lot of times, again, these are directly tied to doubts. When you can identify these and just, ah, I'm sorry, I I made a mistake. It was... 10 years ago, it was five years ago, whatever. I needed money. <laughs> if whatever the case is, uh, you know, let go of it. It's all good. It's how it works. Hopefully all this stuff helps. Uh, self-love, man. It's good times. Got to love the good times with the self-love. Uh, it's been a uh, wonderful trip and journey as always. Dan Radio style, of course. Going out with Sarah Borellis, Brave. Maybe.